uh, yes students so just take a five uh, minutes break you can uh, five to ten minutes break so that you can pray and then we'll start no problem i hope now you can hear me Yes, Abdul Mohsen, uh, can you hear me now? Is it okay? Uh, yes, actually voice I have uh, uh, disabled it only is uh, the messages. Actually, you can send me a message. Uh, the mic is disabled just to have a smooth functioning of class. Actually, if I enable the mic, you know, then there will be a chaos. So it's better if you have anything, you can send me a message, then it will be okay. Yes, yes, class will be recorded. Yes, you know, already the recording option is there. So this session is being recorded as well. So it will be there. The recording will be there. Yes, Sal Salim, you can sign from another door. It's okay. You, you can check. I don't have a problem, but I don't know the technicalities. But you can uh, sign in from other device. Yes, Abdul Mohsen, is it okay? Can you hear me as well? Yes, Abdul Mohsen, can you hear me now? Is it okay?
Okay, we, I'm going to start a class now. So what I'm going to do is for the time being, I'm going to disable the messages now, right? So uh, once I uh, finish a few slides, then uh, uh, you, you can uh, send me a message. So in the meantime, right now, just I'm going to disable the message just for time being. And later on, you can uh, send me the messages. The attendance attendance will be taken automatically based on how you join the session. Okay. Yes, the report will be submitted automatically, so I don't have to enter a manual thing. So it is based on a log report which will be generated at the end of this session and will submit it to the management. So attendance will be done automatically. Yes. No, actually, timing is not in uh, my <laughs> my control it is from the management and we have a lot of students they have accommodated so timing will be as per your schedule so there is no discussion with me on the timing you can check with the management timing so I don't have to take the attendance manually again I'm repeating it will be done automatically through the system okay is it clear so I'm going to start the class now. If you have any other issue before I disable the message for the time being. Okay, I'm going to start now. Uh, sorry for a little bit uh, delay. This was because I was in another session, so I could have joined this session as well from the beginning, but it's okay now. So it was our first class. So as you know that this is our engineering economics uh, course. So I'll repeat again that attendance will be done automatically through the system. If you are joining late, it is just for your information that I have nothing to do with the attendance. So that's why it's very important that you join the session. And these sessions will be recorded as well. Their recording will be available on Blackboard. Now this course I have already shared the course uh, specification as well on Blackboard. So for any no notification, please check your Blackboard. So any update, the link or any inf important information will be posted on Blackboard. Okay. Also, if you have any other questions, you can send me through WhatsApp messages only in my office hours, which are mentioned as well in a course syllabus. It is period six on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. But keep in mind that when you send WhatsApp message, please mention your student ID and your course ID. This is very important. You know, I am receiving a lot of messages. So I have hundreds of students in different courses. So I won't be able to answer anything without this information. Now, just to tell you about the course, right? This course is uh, theory plus uh, practical as well. Practical means you will have some problems, right? Uh, it's kind of uh, statistics, not that deep. Very few formulas will be there, right? And there is a little bit changes in uh, qu quizzes, the, the weightage of quizzes. I have already upload, uh, up uploaded this uh, assessment as well on Blackboard. Now the quizzes will be instead of uh, 30, 20% uh, quizzes will be 30%. 
and final exam will be 30 percent so 30 and 30 60 percent midterm is 20 percent and assignment is 20 percent so this will be your new assessment again it is there on uh, blackboard you can see and still if you have any question anything you can send me a message or email both type of communications are okay with me so in this course we will cover chapter number one two three four five 8, 9, 12, and 15. These are the chapters which we will cover. Okay. So these chapters will be covered. Yes. So this one, as I said before, assessment uh, quizzes is updated. The quiz, the slide is not updated, but you can see the update on Blackboard. So I'm going to enable now the chat messages. So if you have any question, anything about assessment, just send me a message now. Yes, now the messages are enabled. So if you have any question, any doubt about assessment, right, about this slide number one, any question you have, please let me know. Yes, a message is enabled now. You can send me a message now. Okay, so no question. Yes, how will be the exam and how will be the assignment? Exams will be online on Blackboard. So these exams will be multiple choices as well as assignments will be online through Blackboard. So you'll have different types of assignments. Online assignments as well. Some questions, problems, kind of sessions there. So you have you can submit those assignments. Yes. Yes, exams. Most of them will yes, it will be MCQs exams, right? Mostly it will be MCQs. We don't have design or this one, so it's all MCQs or true false these kind of questions, or maybe very small questions about uh, theory which is of course theory is not possible you all have the books in front of you so we cannot have a uh, theory quiz or questions not possible so it will be mcqs on blackboard yes talal is it clear now No, you will not have six assessments, first of all, understand. You will have quiz 15%, quiz 2, 15%, so is 30. Of course, it is six, but these six assessments will be divided in different chapters. Instead of having a one quiz, I may have a quiz at the end of each chapter. So at the end, they will be counted as, you know, all all quizzes before midterm is quiz one and their weightage will be 15 percent yes <laughs> exam will be of course you you have the book in front of you so it is of course open book so you have all the exams uh, book is no question right yes studying from slide is uh, enough yes for the exam and solving questions from the exercises would be enough exam timing will be from uh, the registrar office you'll have the schedule just like a normal exam time when you have it will be mentioned on the blackboard
now exam times quizzes uh, like in uh, previous semester you all i think have experience about the exam times it was those exams were available online for 24 hours so it's uh, not an issue okay okay thank you thank you very much uh, yes akram i don't have an idea about this one whether it is late or not we will just send a report to the management so well if you join it at seven four or late normally actually we start the session late so already i don't think it will be counted as late but just wait for it what's management is going to tell us about this attendance still uh, we are not sure only we will uh, send a report which is which will be generated through the system to the management okay so i'm going to move to the next slide now so i'm going to move to the next slide and in the meantime i'll disable the messages so you cannot send a message now Okay. Yes. Now engineering economics. Okay. Why we need to study engineering economics? This is a question. Right. And why do we care about studying engineering economics? Right. And why do engineers have to study it? As we know that engineers normally in a real life scenario, you have not only deal with a technical details of a problem, you have to look at or understand the economics as well. What do I mean? For example, technically you know that how to calculate a load, for example, or what is the technical specification for designing a bridge or a building or how to calculate let's say load in engineering you know what is physical properties those are all the technical details but in engineering economics we will not look at that aspect of engineers right in a real life engineers deal with the business with economics right so whatever decision you made or the solutions as an engineer you provide a solution those solutions or those products should make an economic sense out of it what is an economic sense we will discuss it later on that what do we mean by economic sense right that about economics and why it is important for engineers to understand that economic sense now in order to start a course we need to know what is economics do you have any idea about economics right now economics uh, okay i'm going to stop a minute yes uh, is there any problem from something there are some uh, hand raised by some students do you have any issue i'm just going to open a chat message so if someone has any issue yes please let me know okay, because there were some students raising hands so it's okay okay i'm going to disable so there is no issue okay now what is economics or in Arabic we call it uh, what is iqtisad right now economics in a personal capacity we have our own economic situation right or sometimes we call it our financial situation now what do we mean by economics remember that as a student or as an individual 
we have resources right resources means we have let's say we talk about money the financial resources right we have a financial resources or money let's say you have a monthly income of 1000 real or 2000 real whatever right now you have to use those resources in order to achieve your objective you know whatever your objectives are means that spending money on your clothes on your uh, entertainment on transportation on food right so similarly this is this slide now which is in front of you is about a theoretical definition of economics economics is the study of how people and society choose to employ scarce resources scarce means limited resources how people or society are going to use those limited resources remember resources are limited right no one has unlimited amount of money even you have millions of reals still that is limited to that million or if someone has a billion they are limited to that billion or whatever amount so there are scarce resources always they could have an alternative use in order to produce various commodities and to distribute them for consumption now or in the future now what is a uh, meaning of this definition is that how people or society or company or aramco or sabic let's say they choose to employ their resources right now resources at aramco or at any business organization or sabic are limited even they are in millions or billions right those resources that could have an alternative use you know instead of opening a new factory in let's say in Russell Khair Sabic can open a new plant in Yamba for example so they have to choose between an alternative source you have to use your scarce resources very wisely why in order to produce various commodities or goods and services and then once you produce those goods and services or commodities or your products you have to distribute them to the customers right without selling there is no point right so you have to distribute them means you have to sell it to your consumers whether they are going to use it immediately or they are going to use it in the future so this is a definition of economics a very basic definition very theoretical definition of economics right in this course you can add engineering economics to it right that why when engineers face the same situation it becomes engineering economics right engineer have limited resources right those resources can be uh, used on alternative uses but be spent a money on a best use in order to produce goods and services now economics is a big part of engineer's job right why we call it it's a big part of an engineer job we know that or you are an engineer what is the job of engineer is to translate those scientific ideas right to produce uh, different kinds of products or systems that can better mankind right this is a way right now those ideas which remember we have more than 70 students in this class or 70 engineers right so those 70 engineers they have 70 different ideas imagine you all are, are working in a one company same company and they ask for some solution to uh, from you so all of you can present a different idea right now those different ideas right which one will be accepted for implementation those ideas which need to make sense economically right so once you have an idea you have to convince other that it makes an economic sense means it will be profitable what do i mean by economic sense that you know once you sell it 
the price is as an example price is affordable to a customer right they can afford it means they can purchase that product at that price so whatever ideas maybe your idea is excellent but it is very expensive and no one can buy it right so first ideas need to make sense economically and as an engineer you must be able to convince others that this is so that your idea is best and let's say it will improve the profitability of the company right so that's why we are studying this course to give you a big picture of your professional career so that in a real life you not only look at a narrow side narrow area of only engineering here you have to look beyond engineering that's why you are taking courses in different areas other than your own major right to have a big picture so that's why we are taking this course to understand some basic techniques that which will help you that how you evaluate a pro evaluate a project and those project how it will be evaluated and how it will be selected by the management so that's why it's very important to understand the basic techniques in engineering economics as we know that engineers are the people who are familiar with all the technicalities of machinery because you you know the technical details of how to calculate a load or what is a best machine or what is the technical specifications right so you are the best judge of them as an engineer right and as an engineer you are also the best judge for the life of those assets or life of those machines what do you mean by life of machine that how many units those machines will be produced let's say in in, in you are in mechanical engineers and you are in production department so there are certain you know capacity the production capacity and you, what is the life of those machines is it 5 year 10 year 20 years or based on uh, the number of uh, goods they pro produce so all engineers they have the idea about what is the useful life of those asset and also you have a technical knowledge to calculate what is the number of units a proposed plant would produce right when it will become operational what will be the operational capacity of a plant these are all technical details right and it's true for any organization which you are going to join in the future after your graduation inshallah so this was a little bit introduction about uh, a course before we start as per our book right so this is what we are going to start chapter number 1 this chapter is all about theory okay it's a theory chapter and there are no pro no practical problems right or like maths chapter 2 and later on you will have all those problem solving and this one but for chapter 1 it's all about theory now chapter number 1 is about engineering economic decisions Yes, we know in our daily life we make decisions, right? What is a decision? Decision is to choose X or Y, right? Register into a summer course or not, for example, is also a decision. Okay, so what is a decision for an engineer? It could be deciding between uh, manual lathe. machine and cnc lathe machine as you can see on this slide number 6 let's say you face a situation you are an engineer so you would like to know that which machine to purchase right so what information do you need if you want to decide whether to purchase a cnc lathe machine or a manual lathe machine so how you are going to decide or do you need some information i need an answer from your side as well so what i will do now i'm going to enable the message yes and i may ask someone some students randomly as well 
okay this is how we are going to conduct the class because your class participation is very important as well so how you are going to decide for example abdullah al amari yes can you hear me abdullah al amari okay again your participation all will be recorded right so abdullah al amari if you are going to decide yes uh, so what information you need from manual lathe machine and cnc lathe machine if you want to choose one of them as an engineer how you are going to decide which information you need can you just type and let me know okay you said uh, uh, specification technical specifications okay okay good yes ahmed al samak yes i hope i am pronouncing your name correctly yes ahmed what are the other information you need ahmed al samak yes ahmed Ahmed Al Samak, I need an answer from you. Okay, quality. Yes, Ahmed. Ahmed said that we need to. Abdullah Al Amari said we need uh, technical specifications, how to use. And Ahmed said that we need a quality. Okay. Aid Aid Saad Al Utebi. Are you there? Yes. Aid al -Otebi. Can you just tell me what are the other informations? Yes, Aid. Are you listening? Please let me know. Yes, Aid. What are the other information? Do we need some other information to decide about how to purchase uh, the machine? Yes, Aid, what is your answer? Any other information you need? Okay. Yes, Aid, as you said that you need uh, one machine with have more functions, right? Okay. I'm going to disable uh, the messages for time being. Okay. Actually, this is just uh, you know the purpose is uh, why I'm disabling is to have a smooth functioning of the class as well so that we can have a nice learning environment. Okay. So what we have learned, let's say, I do Debi, he said that we'll choose a machine with have more functions. Uh, and Musab al Harbi, he said that we need also consider the cost. Yes. What is required to do with the machine and quality? Yes. All of you talk about quality and specifications. Yes, that is part of your job as an engineer. But you should also consider the cost. Remember, is that this is what uh, Musab al Harbi has mentioned, right? Is about the cost. So this is what we are looking at it in this course right as an engineer as i said you know the technical details you know the specifications the quality but what's important in a real life is to decide about the economics the cost for example right or if we purchase for example why we are purchasing these machines for example maybe because uh, our products are defective and as a result of those uh, defective parts uh, our customer are complaining and our sales are going down this is a one reason right now we are not talking about the technical details now we are talking about in terms of money that as a result of an old machine right old lathe machine which is not in a good condition and if we change to a new machine let's say i'm just assuming that uh, let's say we decide that technically we are going to use CNC lathe machine and now in order to convince the management 
convince others, we can say that, okay, CNC lathe machine will reduce the defective parts. It will improve the quality. And it, as a result of improved quality, our sales will be increased by 1 million, as, as an example, that monthly increase in sales will be 1 million reals, as an example. So now see, when we are talking about money, this one, this is how you are going to have a situation in future, in a real life scenario, right? To convince others, you have to talk about an economic aspect. So not only technical details, but economic aspects. Time, you know, talking something about money, right? Now, just a summary of what I was trying to say before. Again, it's the same thing. That why engineering economy is important to engineers, right? Engineers are the one who design, of course, and create the solutions, products. Those designing involves economic decisions, right? And engineers must be able to incorporate economic analysis into their creative efforts. So whenever you are going to design an engineer, you must know that what are the economic aspect economic analysis of your solution of your product right okay so because as an engineer you have to select and implement from different alternatives means you have cnc machine or lathe machines as an example i've just uh, shown you in a previous slide you have to choose between two alternatives right even within cnc machine you may have cnc machine a B, C, D, you know, is different choices, right? So you have to implement, you have to choose between those alternatives, right? So that's why it's very important to understand the economic analysis. And that's why an important concept in engineering economics is the time value of money, economic equivalences and cost estimations are very important for engineers. We'll discuss them in later on chapters. This one, what is uh, economic equivalence? What is the time value of money, which is chapter number three? Cost estimation about costing, which is chapter number, uh, I think, eight in budgeting, as well as in chapter number two. So these are so many different techniques. As an engineer, you need to make an economic analysis. So that's why proper economic analysis for selection and execution is a fundamental task of engineering so you will not be relying only on your technical knowledge in the real life real life scenario you should know an proper economic analysis which is very important for your real life working environment okay so how they will be implemented. This is what I will show you here. This is an example on next slide number eight. This is an income statement as an example, right? What is an income statement? I'm not discussing its uh, elements right now. We'll discuss it in chapter number two, right? Second income statement is in front of you. It's just an old one, uh, right, in 2013. Uh, Sabic has a net income. If you just look at a last item for 2013, it is around 25 million reals, right? I'm not discussing the number right now, but how a Sabic made a profit? This is a profit. We know what is a profit, right? When you sell something for, let's say, 100 real minus the cost, right? cost of making, cost of uh, renting, cost of uh, distribution, all those costs, after you deduct from your sales, you get a profit. So this is a profit or net income. They are the different names. We'll see those different terminologies later on in a chapter. All right? This is a purpose to familiarize you with these terminologies as well. As an engineer, you are new. You might not have heard these terms these uh, uh, these statements terminologies may be new but with the practice it will be okay when you you know you continue with this course at the end you know what are these 
different terminologies means what is sales what is profit what is gross profit and net profit or net income what are the difference you'll see it later on so but whatever decisions someone is made in sabic let's say as an example see this is the profit of sabic how they achieve a profit because of decisions made by engineers whether at the top or at a lower level every individual has a role to play right what to sell which product to use right which material to use so there were so many things right people have done during a year as and at the end you have an income right so whatever decisions you made they will be measured in terms of money right if you purchase a cnc machine and it it has increased the sales it should be reflected on some numbers right you have to prove what you are saying is through the numbers okay so this is just for your reference we'll discuss later on in verse 2 the detail of our income statement now these are some examples on slide number 9 right these are some examples right where engineering economics plays an important role if you look at first one choosing the best design for high efficiency gas furnace right the first one is it an engineering decision or is it an economic decision so i'm going to do i'm going to enable a chat now and i'll ask someone a random questions to the students right and you need to answer those questions Okay, Habib Ali, are you listening to me, Habib Ali? Yes, Habib, can you tell me for first one, choosing the best design for a high efficiency gas furnace? You know what is a gas furnace, especially if you are a mechanical engineer, right? So, what is the best design? Is it an engineering decision or is it an economic decision? Is any money involved or it's just a technical decision? If someone has to decide, if you are going to choose a best Habib Ali, yes. Yes, Abdullah, wait. I have asked a question to Habib. Yes, Faisal, what is the lag? Is it a, am I lagging or voice is clear? Yes, okay. Okay, yes, Habib, as you said that. No, it's it's clear for me. It's clear. I think someone are saying they are clear, and someone saying is not clear. Okay, it's clear now. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Clear now, please. Yes. Okay, it's clear. Okay, it's, if it's not clear, maybe you can listen to the recording again, so it will be okay. So we, we don't know, sometimes it may happen with some, depending on internet connectivity as well. Anyhow, I'm just keep on going, so I'll not uh, uh, discuss this one. Yes, so as Habib said that choosing a best design for high efficiency is an engineering decision, right? So now I'll ask another question to Khalid Al Ghamdi. Yes, Khalid. Khalid Al Ghamdi. Yes, Khalid. Khalid, are you listening to me? Yes. Second one, selecting the most suitable robot for a welding operation on automotive assembly line. I'll read it again. The most suitable robot for a welding operation 
right you know the welding operation auto on on an automotive assembly line automotive means like cars for example in car assembly lines you have robots doing different jobs so one of the job is welding so you have to select a most suitable robot for this one is it an engineering decisions or economic decisions yes khalid yes you are right it is uh, uh, engineering decisions because it's all technical detail right so if you look at number 3 now yes talal ali talal ali al musa talal ali al musa can you listen uh, to me yes talal the third one making a recommendation about whether a jet airplane for an overnight delivery services should be purchased or leased i'll explain everything making a recommendations suggestions let's say in this scenario here that we should there is a scenario where you need an jet airplane for an overnight delivery you know you have to deliver something in a night right so should you purchase an airplane as an example or machine whatever or lease it lease lease means on ija rent right purchase or lease is it an engineering decisions or economic decisions so so what is your answer yes talal are you listening to me uh, yes sir all thank you thank you very much yes you are right it is an economic decision because whether we purchase or we lease it it depends on the amount of money we have in our pocket right okay so <laughs> this is uh, don't worry it is all about participation abdullah hussain it's not about right and wrong question here we are just discussing a class and we are discussing you know your participation in a class that's it this is what we are doing is not about right or wrong no it's about your participation now i'm going to disable so that i can continue so i'm going to disable messages now for a time being Okay now similarly number 4 is considering the choice between reusable and a disposable bottles for a high demand beverages beverages like you know juice or cold drinks or pepsi pepsi or this one right that whether you are going to use a reusable uh, sorry reusable or disposable bottles for uh, very high demand beverages or juices it all depends on cost so yes this is an economic decision i'll just move it quickly i hope i made my point clear right so wherever there is money involved it is an economic decision and wherever there is a technical detail involved it is an engineering decision so i hope now this classification is clear that uh, what is an engineering decision and what is an economic decision right so now i'll can uh, continue on to next slide and after this one i'll just take a break for 5 uh, minutes right so that we can start again now role of engineers in a business again it's the same thing for summary of what we are saying earlier right that as an engineer in a business you have to create and design engineering projects analyze those projects based on the methods your safety assessment about the market impact on the environment you analyze all this right maybe production method let's say which production method we are going to use it's a purely technical detail right engineering safety of course these are all engineering technical details impact of environment market assessment means that how about the availability in the market whether customer are willing to buy or someone else is already selling these are all 
part of analysis it requires in your daily life you have to deal with these things as a result of this analysis you will evaluate what will be your expected profitability right what do you mean by expected profitability that if we provide a new solution or a new product how much will be the expected profitability what is the timing of cash flows how much we need now to purchase machines equipment cash flows means the cash we'll discuss also again in chapter number 3 what are the cash flows more into detail or what is the financial risk involved with it? what if customer are not willing to purchase at a price which we are going to set we are going to set a price let's say 100 rials and there is someone else in the market at that time he might reduce his price for pro his product so we'll see financial risk again also later on so but these are what we are going to do as an engineer you have to evaluate an expected profitability timing of cash flows financial risks and then you have to also evaluate their impact their effect on their financial statements means what will happen about what you do on the financial statements like what i have shown the sabic income statement what will happen on that statement what will have be happen on a market value of the firms market value or stock price you know what will happen if it's a listed company on the dab what will be happen if uh, if we start a new factory or new product or introduce a new product what will happen how our investor perceive it should stock price will increase or should it uh, or will it decrease so these are all part of evaluation this is what will be important for you as an engineer you will be involved in certain uh, areas right maybe not immediately up after graduation but as you progress in engineering professions inshallah when you go on to different levels in your career you will be dealing with these things might be you'll be dealing more of economic than engineering as you move up in a management you know if you get a promotion and you move up in the hierarchy if you are in the top management mostly you'll be dealing with economic decisions so now i'm going to stop here right and then i'll continue from slide number 11 after a short break of uh, exactly 10 minutes okay so i'm going to stop and if you have any question anything please let me know and also it's a, you can take a prayer break in case those who want to pray now so you have 10 minutes after 10 minutes we'll continue in the meantime if you have any question just send me a message i'm still here i'll answer those uh, messages
yes students or can you listen me yes yes can you hear me okay okay, okay i'm back now so someone asked me a question about that whether we are going to learn a feasibility study yeah, nasir asked me this question specifically uh, nasir marwahi that whether we are going to learn a feasibility study in this course economic analysis is part of a feasibility study yes so you are going to learn something of it as well yes okay so i hope you all are back okay so i'm going to disable a chart now uh, uh, slide now uh, uh, this one the messages sorry uh, but uh, before this if you have any questions on previous slides please ask me now still i did not uh, disable the messages so if you have uh, any question on these slides let me know so any question okay okay no question. so now i'm going to move to the next slide okay now the next slide which is slide number 11 types of business organizations what is a business organization why it is important now as you know that once you graduate so you have to join some companies some of them are uh, business organizations some are not business organizations but this course here we are dealing with the business organizations right uh, what are business organizations and what are not business organizations for example uh, royal commission or you is also uh, not a business organizations or when we are talking about uh, let's say you uh, join some government uh, other organizations they are not business organizations right but anyhow here we are joining uh, sorry we are looking at a business organization which you might deal upon your graduation so there are three main types of business organizations or we call them legal forms of business means under which any business is registered with the government this is what we call it a legal form of a business that how a business is registered with the government for example how a business is registered with a ghurfat jariya or with uh, ministry of commerce or whatever how the business is registered as a legal entity okay and what are those three what are their advantages and disadvantages okay now first type of a business organization is a proprietorship this is a business which is owned by one individual remember this is a legal form if there is a one owner of a business right if a business is owned by one person one individual we call it a proprietorship or sometimes we call it sole proprietorship this is when a business is owned by one type one individual partnership right we call it sharaka or sharaka if i'm not uh, uh, clear about the arabic exact uh, pron pronunciation right when a business is owned by more than one person right you have more than one owner could be two three could be brothers even father and son still it is a partnership means the legal ownership and the legal ownership when it is owned by more than one person and it is established by a written contract right that uh, what is the role of the owners who owns it what are their responsibilities how they are going to distribute the profit if there is a loss how they are going to share the loss these are all written in a contract this is what we call it a partnership this is another type of a business last one is a corporation now corporation is another type of a legal entity which is created under capital market law here in saudi arabia we have a capital market law 
right this is what we call it a corporation and where ownership and managers are different corporations like aramco is a corporation right corporation shereka we call it i'll explain on next slide as well each of each one of them in more detail now this next slide which is slide number 12 about a sole proprietorship what are its advantages what is a sole proprietorship a business owned by one individual that's it what are the benefits one individual owns or what are the advantages one individual owner and he is responsible for all the firm's policies he knows uh, what to sell what not to sell he is the one who are going to make all these decisions right he is the individual owners right what to sell if you look at uh, even successful businesses like uh, facebook or google initially they were all owned by one person when they start in the initial stage stages they were all those businesses were registered as a sole proprietorship right the owner of the business he owns all its assets on means he has the malikiyah the legal rights for ownership right who owns the assets is the owner very easy to start right easy to start you can just go and register not difficult ease of managing because you are only one yourself you are very small right and you keep all the profits you don't have to share a profit with anyone and you don't have to pay any specific business taxes actually this is uh, especially in relevance to a us or other environment where uh, there are a lot of taxes so actually people have to pay a personal taxes and business taxes as well so if any business is registered as a sole proprietorship the owner do, do not pay any special business taxes he only pays a personal taxes you know personal taxes are different than the business taxes personal taxes may be 5 10 depending on the profit, profitability but but business taxes are very high especially in Uh, those western economies sometimes it is uh, minimum is kind of 35% 40 or even it is around 50% is the uh, business tax rate so you don't have to pay any specific business tax here you only pay personal taxes remember like here in our saudi environment uh, we pay let's say the riba the riba remember is or we call it vat vat is not this type of tax vat vat is a tax you gave not on income you pay a, a vat on sales right on sale price whenever someone sells it right we are not talking about that tax vat is different this is a tax which you pay at the end when you have a profit right so here in saudi arabia the saudi owners they have to pay the income tax even if you look at a uh, income statement of sabic at the end whatever profit they have to pay is they have to pay a uh, zakah on that profit okay this is just for your information now what are the disadvantages of proprietorship or a sole proprietorship it has unlimited liability we know what is uh, this is a new terminology for you and it is very important for uh, this one to understand what is unlimited liability unlimited means something without limits bila hadud right we call it unlimited liability means your responsibilities your obligations your responsibilities your liabilities means your obligations are unlimited why because this is the main difference between a corporation and a sole proprietorship i'll also explain later on uh, now it means here liability you know liability means when you have a liability obligations let's say one of the liability is when you take a loan from a bank you took a loan from a bank and let's say god for forbid you can pay the loan you don't have enough money you took a loan for a business but you cannot pay a loan okay now in that case what is your responsibility 
for this type of a business you are personally responsible whether you have to sell your home your car whatever you are personally responsible you have a total responsibility for all debts remember d e b t s this is very important you will listen again and again debts is like loans right for all debts b is silent please this one you will listen many times in this course so you are total responsible for all debts and liabilities any loans obligations of a company you are personally responsible okay i'll again repeat the same concept on next slide with corporation then it will be more clear now it is difficulty in raising finance capital because you cannot issue shares you cannot sell shares just like aramco did for example because it was a corporation if you registered under sole proprietorship you cannot sell shares so it's difficult to raise money if you are registered as a sole proprietorship again you are you have a limited size and efficiency you have limited managerial experience because only you are the sole responsible of the policies and procedures so of course you have a limited experience now next slide which is about uh, partnership which is a business owned by more than one owner and established under written contract what are the advantages of corporation again same thing low cost and easy to establish easy to manage because different partners has different things to offer you know if you are before you were alone now you are two persons with different backgrounds different experience or different resources now it's easy to manage Uh, there is no special business taxes even partnerships you pay the same personal tax easy to raise financial capital because now you have two persons he can share his money as compared to the previous one But it is larger than the sole proprietorship what are the disadvantages of a partnership again you are personally responsible each unlimited liability each partner is personally responsible for all the debts so each par partner is personally responsible for a loan of a company or loan of a partnership and again it has limited life means if a one pa partner leaves or he dies god forbid whatever situation partnership finish you need to write a new contract with the new partner whoever and there could be conflict between partners differences on managing on what to sell on policies on so many things if there is a difference there could be conflicts so these are some of the advantages of the sorry disadvantages of the partnership corporation which is a legal entity created under some provincial or federal law this is what exactly written in your book in saudi arabia i have used the word a legal entity created under capital market law why i use the word capital market law in my previous uh, slide here i will just show you if you look at here that it's a legal entity created under capital market law what is a capital market law it is the law in saudi arabia under which a corporation is registered right like aramco is now a corporation i still remember last year when i was teaching i said no corporation aramco is not a corporation because it was not on uh, tadawul but now it is on tadawul and it is created under a law in saudi arabia the name of the law is capital market law because in us they have a different provincial laws or state laws they call it or federal laws the law which is under federal government right and in corporation owners and managers are different what do we mean by this one what are the owners let's say for aramco right uh, we all know or we have very recent experience of all this what has happened with aramco that they offered the shares to the public now whoever is the shareholders they are the owners right like in aramco's case there are 2% shares which was recently offered to public for around uh, 29 billion dollars right that was the largest of uh, ipo in ever happen in the world they broke the record of facebook and alibaba earlier so the 2% shares were offered for around 29 billion us dollars just to extra information i'm sharing uh, shareholders right could be in millions or billions of course they are the owners but they cannot run a company 
every day you cannot um, go millions of people and make a decision so what they do is shareholders they elect board of directors any share any corporation they elect board of directors out of maybe million shareholders these are the one who are majority shareholders right so maybe five to six board of directors they represent shareholders right okay and they are the one who appoint the managers you know the title could be vice chairman or president whatever so who run the day-to-day -day operations this is an example of a big corporate structure right uh, do you call it a vice chairman or you call it a president vice president or general manager or Madir Aam or director whatever the title title is uh, the functionality is this one that managers are the one who are responsible for day-to-day -day operations which product to sell how to hire the employees whether to uh, close a factory open a factory whatever you know day-to-day -day operations they are the one how much discount to give to different uh, customers do do they need to sell through online or whatever so these daily operation uh, decisions made by these managers and they are answerable to the owners who are the owners these are the owners for a corporation okay so i hope it's clear now and now i'll move to the next slide advantages of a corporations again easy to raise financial capital because you can this is the main advantages you can sell stocks right shares to investors just like aramco did right you can sell stocks or you can sell bonds bond is like a skook with or suck which is a kind of a loan which you have to return it on a specific date with interest as well or a profit whatever you say it so there are two ways where where corporation can raise financial capital either by selling stocks or shares or by selling bonds in shares you don't return let's say for ramco they don't have to return 32 reals if i have shares i cannot go back to a ramco to return the shares and take 32 i have to sell that shares to the market selling bonds is uh, okay i'm going to enable a message abdul mohsin has a question uh, for time being yes abdul mohsin can do you have any specific question yes abdul mohsin are you there okay i'm i'll continue if no question <clears throat> now corporations can easily raise capital through stocks or through bonds stocks is a share which be, is, which is sold to okay 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 i'll explain uh, I'm, I'm still on corporation let me finish so it will be clear uh, advantages of a car <clears throat> uh, the main difference between a proprietorship and uh, sorry between partnership uh, and a corporation for a corporation uh, you may have millions of shareholders they are not partners understand the difference in a partnership maybe there are two four five or ten persons and they will be registered maybe you are registered with urfa tajaria is enough for a partnership let's say in saudi saudi environment you may be registered with baladia or with urfa tajaria as a partnership right once you will for a corporation you will be registered as capital market authority under hayya sukal mal with wazara commerce we call it here in saudi arabia right so for a corporation you may have millions of shareholders not partners partners are different partners could be two three four five or ten percent maximum maybe so these are partnership partnership is registered under a different law and a corporation is registered under a different law so these are the two main differences I hope it's uh, clear now. Okay. Now, 
advantages of a corporation that uh, in corporations we can sell stocks we can sell shares we can sell bonds but in partnership again you cannot sell shares for a partnership because you are not authorized to sell it because you are not registered under capital market uh, authority capital market law because it's a different uh, registration and transfer of ownership is very easy what do we mean by transfer of ownership if you have a share or a stock you have remember you have um, uh, you are the owner up to that share maybe it is 0.0002% as an example if you have a one share right but still you have an ownership to that company so how you can transfer your ownership by selling your shares and we know that you can go to a website the dawal or on the banks you can sell your shares so in the millions of times every day people are selling shares means they are transferring the ownership so but in sole proprietorship and partnership you cannot sell your share like this one you cannot just go and sell and immediately ownership will be transferred no that is only possible under corporations your liability is limited now if you remember in previous two types they have unlimited liability here we have limited liability now what do you mean by limited liability now if you remember in previous two slides we said that let's say there is a loan taken by a business and they cannot pay it then the owners are personally responsible to return that loan to the banks right whether you sell your personal belonging your house whatever but in a corporation let's say aramco has billions of loans so are we personally responsible if i have a one share as an example right for 32 real so am i responsible for paying those billions of reals as a loan if aramco cannot pay no in that case in this type of a corporation because my ownership is limited to that share stock right so what i will lose is my share maximum it will have a zero value as an example right so your liability is limited up to the amount of share you have also tax rate is different than the proprietorship and partnership normally it's a business tax rate which is uh, uh, very yes which is uh, high responsible means in that case okay someone asked a question about who is responsible for loans yes then uh, the bank is responsible whoever gave the loan there is a different procedures they can uh, sell the assets they have some guarantees they may uh, sell the share you know the assets of that one if someone uh, cannot pay a loan they can sell the building their building as an example they take an ownership of uh, those uh, assets for example if someone cannot pay it in case of a corporation if a company clo uh, yes i understand your question abdullah abdullah al ghafli so i'll i'll explain yes that if a company closes and they cannot pay a debt yes now they have to recover their loan from the assets of that company whatever company if it's uh, let's say bankrupt the technical name is bankrupt means when you cannot pay your loan or your debt if you cannot pay your debt or loan then let's say i'm riyad bank as an example and company x took a loan from me and now they cannot pay so when i gave them a loan i had certain agreement with them that if you cannot pay a loan you know you have, as a bank there are certain procedures they have to make sure okay you cannot pay there must be a guarantee maybe their building their land or their factory bank will sell it and recover their money this is how uh, we are going to deal in case of uh, bankruptcy and there are bankruptcy laws we call it in every country also in saudi arabia there are bankruptcy laws that if a firm cannot pay it what is the procedure and banks those giving loans they should know it anyhow just going off the topic uh, so coming back to uh, this one so tax rate is different very high tax rate normally businesses pays high tax especially in the us and life is unlimited means a corporation will you know continue forever this is what we assume that sabik will continue right disadvantages startup expenses are very high 
they are in millions of reals to be true if you want to start a corporation means if you want to register with the double right so there are a lot of expenses they are in millions i think it's very expensive it's not easy so profits are taxed at a high rate for a corporation normally 40 50 percent that's what i told you that in partnership and uh, proprietorship you only pay at a personal tax which is a different rate than a business tax corporation are very subject to so many government regulation very strict regula regulations as compared to sole proprietorship and partnership these are some of the disadvantages of corporation now if you want to know whether something is corporation or not you can go to the double all the companies listed on the doubles are corporations okay so now i'll ask some questions to uh, some students uh, randomly just few questions uh, ali yusuf are you listening to me ali yusuf ali al gagush uh, yes forgive me if there is any mistake in the pronunciation yes ali ali can you tell me uh, the name of uh, any corporation in saudi arabia any corporations other than and Sabic. Can you just type it, Ali? Yes, Ali, can you type it? Are you listening or do you have the access? Yes. Uh, yes, Ali, other than Aramco, not Aramco or Sabik. Any other example, Aramco or Sabik, other than them? Sadara. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about Abdul Latif Jamil? Is it a corporation? Can you tell, can someone tell me? Abdul Latif Jamil, as an example. Mm, someone said no, someone said yes. Uh, Ahmad Ibrahim. Yes, why it is not a corporation? Why Abdul Latif Jamil is Yes, why Abdul Latif Jamil is not a corporation? Because, okay, yes, yes, uh, Nasser, yes, Nasser, as you said, because it is not on the double. Yes, see, this is the criteria. Yes, of course, they are the agent. Yes, whatever. So the criteria, you need to look at it, whether they are on the double or not, right? So Abdul Latif, Jamil, you cannot fight them on the double, as an example. Maybe they are registered as a sole proprietorship or a partner. I don't know who are the owners. If it's a one person, is owner means the legally. You know, the legal owner is one, or they are a family and they are all partners. Then it is partnership, right? So, but they are not corporation. Technically, you cannot call. A okay. So this next slide is actually a small, I'm just sk skipping this uh, this slide that uh, what engineers do very uh, quickly, I'll, I'll go, go through over it, that as an engineer, you involve in planning, planning needs investment means money, and then you have manufacturing, marketing, and then there is a profit. So this slide is not that important, whatever we discussed before, the same thing is there on this slide. Uh, so I'm going to stop at this, slide so i'll continue next time from this slide number 18 right from here we'll continue yes sad the responsibilities about money does is uh, work as well uh, 
Now, this one we are talking about limited responsibilities about money, about loans. Unlimited. If you're talking about Saad, I'm specifically answering your question. Saad, Saad, Saad Al Khaldi, that if you're talking about the difference between uh, the responsibility, is of course, is about loan. That in case of a default, who is responsible, right? But if you let's say responsibility be about work, it is it depends what is in the contract of the partnership, for example. Uh, if uh, I hope I answer your question, but still, if not clear, you can just write your specific questions. I'll try to answer. Okay. So now next time we will continue from this slide number 18. So please review these slides. Chapter one is theory, not difficult. Just you can have your own understanding. We might have very basic questions from this chapter, right? Maybe some true false or multiple choice questions about theory or the questions which I have shown you. So chapter one is very basic about introduction. So not difficult, something very basic, but again, it is very important. Our quiz will be, I think, next week after we finish chapter two. So we'll be finishing our quiz in this week. So next week we'll have our quiz as well. Remember, this is a summer semester. So summer semester means you have a double weeks. So, you know, you'll be spending more times. So our next, Quiz will be in, in, in a next week. Okay, chapter one we don't have anything, so after chapter two we will have it. As far as attendance is concerned, as I said earlier, it is recorded automatically. Okay, uh, quiz which day? As you said, Aid Aid Al Utebi. Just specifically answering your question. Actually, quiz will be available online and you'll have uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, more time. Maybe you have one day just to answer your quiz. So it will be there in the next week. Yes. Yes, uh, don't worry if you enter into the other session again, the report will be there generated from that one as well. Uh, no, you will not have 24 hours to solve the quiz. You may have two, three hours to solve the quiz, right? It's not that you will have 24 hours. That, is, that was for exam, final exam. You will have 24 hours, right, to solve. But for quiz, you may have uh, uh, one hour or 30 minutes, depending on the size of the quiz and the marks. Okay, so is there any other question before we close our session for today because we are closing in a few minutes? Yes, quiz will be available, of course, for 24 hours, but you have to finish a quiz within 30 minutes. Yes, it will be available. You'll have enough time. And just to tell you in other courses, in my course, for example, in another course today, we had some business course, I gave them two days for a quiz. So it is there online, but yeah, once they start a quiz, they have to finish in certain time. So if no question, then we can close this session. And have a nice day. I hope you all get uh, good grades. Stay safe. May Allah protect all of you. And have a nice time. And inshallah, we'll see you in our next class. Right? Our next class is okay so our tomorrow class is period 12 and 13 so period 12 tomorrow will start at, at uh, six o'clock so tomorrow class will start at six wednesday class will be as per the schedule 
right the uh, in schedule let me see it is one to seven o'clock yes i'm sorry yes it is as per the schedule so it's a first class yes so you'll have an assignment and quizzes every week yes yes mustafa i'm talking i'm answering your question yes you'll have assignments and quizzes almost every week wednesday class again will be in same time as per the schedule all classes will be as per the schedule yeah yeah it's it's okay for a time being if you join but for next time be careful again i i'm not the one who are entering the attendance it is automatically recording uh, through the right already a report will be generated which i will send it to the management now actually we'll have a live sessions i'm sorry this is the instruction now we cannot have a live lecture oh sorry recording recording will be available you can see but you have to attend all the sessions yes you have to log in as a teacher i have to come and be available on time and you have to attend and we have to send a report so i cannot just uh, uh, record a lecture put it on a youtube that was there in the last semester it was a different instructions in the beginning it was because it was in the middle of the semester uh, the last uh, time so we had a special situation but this time we had very clear instructions from the management that all classes will be live as sessions live sessions as per the schedule okay is it clear salim okay okay so thank you thank you salim thank you so thank you very much so i'm going to stop the recording and i'm going to leave the session now thank you very much best of luck just check all your update on blackboard okay thank you very much yes amro do you have a question yes amro Amru, do you have a question? Please feel free to ask. You raise the hand. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you very much. So I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to leave the session. Thank you and uh, good night to all of.